and welcome back to the channel hope everybody's doing well and in today's video we are continuing with the metrit im extra and taking a look at this coil test function built into the instrument now in order to utilize this function you do need a coil adapter there are two options available this here is the original coil test adapter that you could purchase with the metrohit coil multimeter this will work with the im extra um, however it's designed to work for motors from 15 kVA up to 80 MVA, uh, which is equivalent to a stator inductance of 10 microhenries to 50 millihenries. I have this adapter from the original instrument. I'm not sure if you can still buy this. It's still listed on Gosson's website, but I couldn't find a retailer for this particular test adapter. The alternative to this adapter is this new coil adapter extra that they have bought out. As you can see, this is a three phase unit as opposed to the single phase unit that the original one is. And you have bi-directional testing switch plus a range switch in the form of a high and a low setting. This uh, low setting is equivalent to the original core test adapter. So 10 microhenries to 50 millihenries or 15 kVA to 80 MVA. The high setting on this side is for a motor from 5 millihenries up to 5 henries or 0.16 kVA to 160 kVA according to Cosson's specifications. Now this adapter will only work with the IM Extra due to this extra functionality that you have built into it and the specialist plug that you see there um, gives a, a bit of a semi-automatic operation. Uh, the unit itself will set you back £334.80 in the UK, including VAT. Now alongside that you will also need the extra lead to make it into a three-phase test lead set uh, for use on the stator. And that will set you back £118.80 or you could use any other set of leads that you desired. Um, the only thing with this unit, whereas this is a single phase unit and will work for all configurations of the motor winding from star delta and open configuration, this unit works best with a motor in star or delta. You can use it for open configuration, but you've got a lot of uh, connection swapping in order to utilize it, but it is possible. So just to explain what this core test function is actually looking at, uh, we have here our little motor stator uh, this is unfortunately this is a 1500 rpm four pole motor so there's a bit more coil set up inside this as opposed to a two pole 3000 rpm motor which would have been easier to look at but this is what we've got uh, we'll see here our state laminations the winding coils themselves and then our state of frame when we do a motor insulation test we are testing the insulation of these coils here this coil wire to the frame and to the stator laminations as well. So any wearing um, in and around here or any dirt that gets in and around and shorts the winding to the frame or to the laminations or rubbed through here, that will be picked up under an earth fault. However, an insulation test won't pick up any shorting between these actual strands of wire. And this is what this coil test does. It's looking for shorts from this individual strand to the next strand and so on. Um, this can occur usually embedded down here where wires leave the stator frame at the exit point here where the stator is moving a little bit and it causes wearing and rubbing around here. You can actually rub the strands together. Um, this is one of the most common faults on a motor but very hard to detect and it usually leads to an earth fault being generated on the motor and that's when you detect whether the motor actually has an issue but the root cause of the earth fault a lot of the time can be attributed to an initial interturn fault that then develops into that earth fault. Um, so that's what this motor test is actually looking at. I'm not going to test it on this actual stator, although I could, because I can't really simulate a turn-to-turn -turn fault. So we're going to do that just with some coils of wire to give you an idea of how it works. So we've set our three coils up here. I made these to resemble a motor winding in star configuration. So one end of the coils are all shorted together here in this WAGO terminal, and then the other ends are up here at the top of the coils to represent UVW winding. 
So just to start off with, we'll do a winding resistance test. You can see U to V here is 0.616 ohms. Let's just move our connection over to there. So we've got 0.609 ohms. And go back this way. We've got 0.607 ohms. So reasonably well balanced set of coils there. So we'll just put this out of the way. And we'll move to the coil test function. So to set the coil test function up, we move from winding resistance there over to the insulation test. We'll press with the function button up here, takes it straight into the coil test. Uh, if you saw a previous video on this, you will know that I cannot record the results on the tablet for this particular function. Works for insulation tests and uh, winding resistance and the like, but the coil test doesn't transfer to the tablet, so we stuck to just seeing the results on this screen of the instrument. Uh, the box itself plugs in on its special plug into the two terminals there. That's the only way it will plug in. You can't plug it into any other terminal configuration. And we can connect our coils up here. And then our adapter here, we've set it to the low setting it on here we can move over to UV test and with that we can then press the start button and you can hear it clicking away and there's the reading that it gets and now it tells you to switch the position to the next one as soon as you do that it restarts the test and it's now testing between the uh, U and W connections and then peeks through There's our first set of readings, and then go straight across and over to the next set. So this is testing in the opposite direction now. And then the final one. There you can see we've got a good set of balanced readings there. That's the test complete, so if I just bring the instrument to the front and zoom in, so you can see there, so there's our set of readings there, obviously all balanced, gives us a value of 104.9 microseconds, deviation of 1.9%, which appears to be all good, deviation over 10% would indicate an issue with the winding. Uh, this is the graph format, you can hit the this button and you can get a set of readings there in a list format should you prefer that way there. Um, so we'll just zoom back out again and move over to there. What I'm just going to do is replace this outer coil here with a smaller coil that's got a bit cut off of it. Uh, we'll flip back to our uh, milli ohms and just measure the winding resistance of this one just to show the difference. So you can see this time we are 0.535 ohms. Now we go to there. Should be as per the original 0.609, which is pretty much what we had before. And then we should go back again for lower resistance again, 0.527. So now you can see there's an imbalance between these three coils. So we will revert back to our coil test. Blue, and we will go again with the coil test. Uh, So it doesn't matter which direction you, know, you do this in, it knows that I've left it on the uh, connection. So we can go, go back and just do the test in the opposite direction. Uh, it's fairly automatic for this. And then So 
you can see we're hitting 104.9 for the original coil, the V to W, which is the same as the original test, and then we're getting 92 microseconds for the other two coils where I've got the smaller coil. Let's do the last one there. So they are balanced in that respect. So let's bring our instrument in closer again. So there's our results screen again. So this time we've got 93.9 seconds against the original 109 microseconds with a deviation of 13.8% indicating that the actual fat is an issue with this core setup, which we know because I've got a much smaller coil. Uh, if you just go to the list function, again, you can compare and you can see where the differential is for that specific phase. So I've just set up the old coil test adapter so you can see how this one operates with the new instrument. There's the coil adapter here, we've just got two leads coming off that go to the crop clips and then this adapter just wires into the two terminals here where the other coil adapter extra goes but you don't have a connection into the auxiliary contacts there. So we will hit the start button, we are connected to U and V phases on our makeshift winding. I'll hit the button and then you get the first read in there. So we've done the first test, now we have two options now. If we just want the three readings, one for each set of windings, then I would just hit the arrow there and move across to the what is the UW winding and then the VW winding. However, if I want the six tests, I have to repeat the UV winding again, but obviously change my connections over so it's going the other way. And hit the start button again. Now I get the reading next to it. And now it's actually moved across automatically over to the UW winding now. So we'll do this in polarity. Start up again. And then reverse the polarity on that one. And again, we've got both our readings, so it's moved over to the next pair of windings, uh, which is W and V. So we'll go that way. That one. See, we've got a slightly higher value, so it's changed the range now. And then our final one is to swap them over. Start button again. And there you have our same set of readings that we've had before. We've actually got 14.9% deviation this time. So that's the test completed. That's how you use the older coil adapter with the new instrument. Perfectly feasible to do it. It's just that you're swapping the wires around yourself and often make sure you're following the correct test sequence as well. So that's the basics of the coil test explained there. And that's been the best way that I can demonstrate it with those coils of wire. What I do plan to do in the future is try and get hold of another motor stator, um, preferably a 2 pole one 3000 RPM, uh, definitely a little bit bigger than this motor so that I can actually place some turn faults on it in various places and see how that affects the core test function and um, what readings you get back from that and also in comparison to the motor winding resistance and also an inductance measurement of the stator as well because that's another way that you can potentially find inter-turn faults that haven't yet developed into an earth fault on the motor. Uh, but, but that'll be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful and I'll see you again in the next one.